Hi guys, welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, what we're going to run through today is the procedure for a tightness test. Okay. Now, I need to make this clear that do not attempt this if you're not gas safe registered. This is purely educational purposes. Okay, for trainees, uh, people who wish to know, etc. Do not attempt this if you're not gas safe registered. I am, you see, so it's perfectly fine for me to do it. So that's the disclaimer out of the way. What I'm going to do now is run through um, the checks that you need to make before the procedure is carried out. Right guys, so what we're going to look out for first is contact number for the emergency services. This is for anybody who needs it, customer, me, or anybody walking, walking on the street. Okay. Next, we're going to make sure that the lever falls to off, which this does. So obviously what, what would happen in an emergency is I'd move this down to off. So it falls to off. Okay, it doesn't fall to on. Next, we're going to make sure it's bonded, which it is, we're fine there. We're also going to make sure that the halt into the property is sealed with the correct, correct compound, which this is. So we're okay. And also we're going to identify the meter as a U6 meter. Right, so now that's all cleared up, moving on. So next it's going to be the test equipment. So we've identified the meter, we've had a quick look around to make sure it's all safe, it's all correct. We've identified the test point which will be here. Um, and now we need to know what test equipment we're going to use, it be it electronic or a um, manometer, a U-gauge, which is what I prefer. That's your manometer. I'm sure most people have seen one before. We need to make sure it's full of water on the line, on the zero, which that is, look, there we go. If it's not, we just adjust it with the adjuster at the back to make sure it's fine. So we need to make sure the equipment and the neoprene hose in good working order because these can crack and leak. Okay, that's about it really on these, quite basic. If you're using an electronic meter, um, obviously make sure it's not damaged, make sure it's calibrated within the last 12 months or whatever the manufacturer's instructions recommend. Um, always make sure it's suitable for the gas test that you, you're putting it under. I mean, you know, most, most are, but you get the odd one that isn't. Make sure the batteries are satisfactory because uh, I've had it on a few occasions where somebody I work with have run out of batteries on their, on their uh, test gauge, which you know isn't ideal. Make sure it's zeroed as well. And also, it is a good practice to purge it in open air first. Okay. So what we're going to do now is um, make sure the all appliance isolation valves or AIVs are turned on, but all control taps and pilots are turned off. Obviously, we don't want to lose any gas. Um, if there is any cooker lids, obviously raise them up because it'll be on the safety device. Um, and then first of all, we're going to turn this off at the ECV or emergency control valve. We're going to isolate that like that. So now we're going to open up the test point over here. It's always good practice to put the pin up there, but in a windy circumstance, put it somewhere safe in your pocket, as long as you've got no holes or anything like that. Next, we're going to double check the gauge to make sure it's zeroed, which it is. We're going to pop the top. Only one side. Attach the hose. And then attach the hose to the test point on the meter. Now, some people find it wise to put leak detector fluid around there so it slides on easier and then it can bubble up. You can do that if you like. I choose not to. I'm going to pop the meter in there. The meter has to be in an upright position for obvious reasons. And this can prove quite difficult to do. Hold it there like that for now. So first of all guys, because it's connected to the meter, uh, we're gonna do we're gonna test a let by on the upstream of the ECV. Okay, this is gonna be a let, the let by test is gonna be one minute 
and it's basically to check that the, the valve inside here isn't passing any gas. Okay, and we're going to do this by raising this handle, watching the gauge to see the water level rise to between 7 and 10 millibar, but I always try and stay on 10. Okay, I don't know if you can see the gauge that well, I'll show you in a second. There we go, there we go, that's perfect. It's just below it on the, uh, on the phone, but it is on 10 millibar. Right, so the time is running for one minute. Again, this is to test the let by on this to make sure it's not leaking. The valve's deemed to have passed uh, only when any rise does not exceed no perceptible movement. M NPM. And that will be an abbreviation um, you'll need to know. For a water gauge, I think it's, um, I'm sure it's 0.25 of a millibar. For electronic gauge, I think it's, I think it's 0.2. Miller box, obviously, it's more accurate. Now, when a rise is recorded greater than the NPM, the cause must be investigated and rectified. Obviously, it's let, let in by gas. Now, to check this, we can disconnect the downstream, downstream outlet union, which is this here. Okay, so obviously, make sure the gas is off still. Disconnect the union, and you can apply leak detector fluid, um, which I've got some here, obviously. I mean, they all come in all shapes and sizes. It's just washing up liquid, that's all it is. <laughs> so you spray that on the uh, the ball valve inside there to check see if it, it is leaking, see if there's any bubbles. Of course, if it is, this is the gas board's job. So if this is leaking, immediately contact them. Okay, and make it safe by putting a cap on here. All right, so that's been running for one minute now. So what we're going to do is raise the level to 20 millibar. Okay, we're going to do this by obviously raising the handle. We don't want to go too high to prevent regulator lock-up. So about 20 millibar, nearly there. And this is a stabilisation. So we've done the let by. That's all safe. That's all fine. We know it's fine. It's not past any gas. We're now moving on to the stabilisation period. Now, during um, hot and cold days, um, you may obviously experience pressure changes, pressure drops during the stabilisation period. That's fine. If it exceeds 23 millibar, take it off, drop it down to 10 again, start again, let it level itself out. Okay. So if there is a pressure change, you need to get it stable in this stage. Okay, you cannot proceed past the stabilization if you can't get a stable pressure. So that's very important. Next, if, as long as everything's all fine, we've got stability, we've, we've held that stability for one minute, we're gonna then move on to a two minute test. We're not gonna adjust the pressure, we don't need to. It's on 20 millibar. We're gonna let that run for a th further two minutes. So in total we've run four minutes. We've run one minute on let by test to test the valve, one minute on stabilization and pressure change, and two minutes for the actual gas test. So that's my two minutes up guys. So the, the test will have only passed, obviously if you haven't had a drop. If for any reason the test fails, smell of gas or whatever, the source of the leak has got to be traced. It's got to be repaired, full stop. If you cannot repair, then you must isolate that section of pipe work that's damaged or, 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 or needs or is leaking, and you must make it safe. Okay, either cap it, whatever, but you can't, you cannot leave a leak. Okay, guys. Obviously, if you if you're in the industry, you know that. So at this point, we're happy. We've passed the let by, passed the stabilisation, and passed the gas test. We're all fine. So now all we're going to do is disconnect the test lead here. I'm just going to pull that off because it's only 20 millibar. Let that pour out. So there we go. We're now going to put this uh, test nipple back in. Like so. 
Now when you tighten this up, you just do a little nip, okay? You don't do it too tight because they can snap off. I've had it done to me in the past. Now we're gonna move the gauge. And because obviously we've disturbed everywhere, we're gonna turn the gas back on, like that. And we're gonna spray everywhere, okay? It's just good practice. Spray on there, spray on the handle because we've touched it. Everywhere we can get, even up here and around the meter unions. Because one slight adjustment can throw it all out. Right guys, fine around there. I like to go crazy with leak detector fluid because you never know. I've never had a gas leak yet. Well, never left one anyway. So it's always good practice to double check your work. Right guys, thank you very much for joining me. Please subscribe to me because it does help me out. Um, again, this is just for informational purposes. Do not do it unless you're gas safe. Thank you very much.